Good morning, everybody. It's uh, whoops, if I don't kill myself, but it's a real pleasure to be here. And I love speaking to entrepreneurs. I mean, I absolutely love it. The only person that loves it more than me is my wife, because I talk a lot at home. And when I go and talk at an event, I have uh, a, a captive audience. I say everything that I want to say, and I'm quiet at home. So my wife's only concern was that I was only going to speak for 20 minutes, and that, and that wouldn't be enough, and I'd still have stuff left in the evening. But look, in the time that we've got together, what I want to share with you really revolves around the subject that I think all of you are here about. Uh, sitting in the front row here for the last couple of hours, I really thought about why are you here? And, uh, and, and I really believe that each and every one of you came because you're trying to attack with something in your business, you're trying to uh, get to a new level, you're trying to start a business, grow a business, but really at essence it's none of those things. You're trying to succeed. That's what you're trying to do. You're not here for fun, you're not here for, uh, for a barbecue and to talk to people and go, you want to learn, apply something, and succeed in whatever you're doing. And I've been interested as an entrepreneur about the subject of success for the last 20 years. Because if you could optimize success, what you're doing will have a greater probability of working. You'll have a greater probability of achieving whatever you want to achieve with less risk. So at the end of my last venture, Solvent Software, which was sold to Schneider a little over a year ago, I took the last year and I really researched the subject of success and I wrote a book. And you know what, this is the fourth book that I've written, but this book's different from other success books for the following reason. Everyone that succeeds writes a book. And that book is success according to that person. Schwarzenegger, success according to Schwarzenegger. Branson, success according to Branson. And there's plenty of people that have achieved much more than me, and they've got a book about how they achieved it and their success factor. So I don't want to write a book about success according to Matt, because I, I didn't think it would add much value really to anyone. I wanted to write about what is scientifically proven to aid success. Not opinions, not theories, not something you heard down the hall or that you applied in your business. Things that you could point research papers to from universities like Harvard, Yale, Stanford, MIT, that over many periods of time have been proven to aid in success. And not only did I want to identify these factors, I wanted to understand why they work, and most importantly, what you can do in your business or in your life to apply them. So that book was released this week, and I'm going to share with you one of the key five things that I found from the research, and I'm talking about thousands of research papers that span decades, and I might have a few minutes to touch upon the second. But what I hope is that you'll be able to walk out of here with something tangible, simple, that you can apply immediately in your life and business. So let me tell you that one of the most critical success factors that is across every discipline, whether it's show business, sports, entrepreneurship, corporate careers, uh, scientific breakthroughs, is clarity of objective, what you're actually trying to achieve. And I know as entrepreneurs, and I've been an entrepreneur for 20 years, you think you have clarity. And you tell investors, you know, I want to raise some money, I want to conquer the world, I want to get the product out there, I want to build a successful business, I want this, I want that. The definition of clarity in the entrepreneur's mind is in those types of statements. But you know what, through the research that I've done, all of those statements and words really don't mean anything. Clarity really comes down to two things, precision and goals. I don't know if you're aware that there are 6,500 languages approximately that are active today on the planet Earth. And there's only one language that cuts across all of those languages and means the same thing wherever you go. Whether it's in a, a country where they communicate through sign language or in the United States or in Australia. And that one universal language is mathematics. 2 plus 2 is always 4, wherever you go. That's why when they put satellites or those uh, deep space voyages that maybe aliens will pick up in a billion years, they talk about mathematics in there. Mathematics is the only universal language on this planet, and many consider it in the universe. So when I talk about precision, I'm talking about numbers. I'm talking about dates, percentages, dollars, units. When you say you want to raise money, when, how much, from who, what percentage of the company, you want to grow a business, 10%, 20 100 many people say I've got a fast growing business. For me, fast is more than 100% per year, every year. That's fast. Somebody else's mind, it might be 10% a year or 20. You go to Silicon Valley, it might be 1,000%. The word fast doesn't mean anything. Good doesn't mean anything. So precision. The second word is goals. I'm not sure if you're aware, 
but almost a hundred years of scientific research proves that goals increase human performance. If you look at the University of Maryland, over a period of 40 years, research conducted by Locke, uh, Edwin Locke has proven on studies of more than 50,000 people across 50 countries in time span spanning from one minute to 25 years conclusively prove that goals increase performance. It's not Matt's opinion, it's not Schwarzenegger's opinion, it's not Branson's opinion, it's fact. You can point to thousands of papers that actually support this. Do you know that research done at Virginia Tech University shows that people with goals earn on average more than nine times during their lifespan than people without goals? Not Matt's opinion, not Branson's opinion, not Schwarzenegger's. University studies supported by factual data. Now the question is why? You've got, I can point to you to a big stack of papers and I want you to do a very simple exercise for me in the next 30 seconds that will demonstrate why goals work. I want each of you to look around and in the next, say, 10 seconds, identify three things, either people or objects, that have the color red in them. Go. Memorize it. Look around. Memorize three items with red. All right, close your eyes. No one's going to come into the audience and uh, do unpleasant things. Just close your eyes. Now think of three things in this room that are green. Can anyone recall three things? It's the end of the exercise for the following reason. You have trained your mind in the last 30 seconds to look at red objects. You've looked around the room, you've identified red shirts or uh, uh, some piece of clothing that someone might have, and you've filtered out all of the additional information, like green. Even though it existed, you can't even recall it. That's what goals do. In your entire day, think about everything you do, all the emails you write, all the people you interact with, all the text messages you send, all the business problems you're confronted with, bills, kids, mortgages, and so on. Across that entire spread, goals focus your attention. They cut through all of that. Are you wearing red? And once you focus your mind, you now go through your day asking the question, are you wearing red? Because that's my goal. I'm looking for an investment you know, or an investor. You've defined something and now you're walking through the day with a contextual backdrop in terms of what you're trying to achieve. Proven by thousands of studies over many, many, many decades. Now the tragedy of this is that out of 100 people, again, university studies, 80 don't have goals. No, no wonder there's so many people that wonder why success eludes them. 80 people out of 100 don't do the most fundamental and basic thing to help themselves achieve what they want. Of the remaining 20, 16 have goals but don't write it down. Out of the four that write them down, only one, one in 100, writes them down and reviews them. The critical ingredient. Why do you have to write it down and review them? To focus the mind. When you think about your goals, you're focused for that second. Just like I focused you on red, you'll forget red in two hours. You'll focus on something else. You write it down and you look at it every day. That's a completely different level of focus. Each of you know who Jim Carrey is. Many of you have seen Dumb and Dumber, uh, Ace Ventura, The Mask. What most of you don't know is that before Jim Carrey became the famous actor that he is today, he was a struggling nobody in Hollywood that struggled to put gas into his car. And at his lowest moment, he wrote a check to himself for $10 million for acting services, payable at a future date, which I think was six or seven years in the future. Before that time was up, one year before that time was up, he got paid exactly $10 million to star in Dumb and Dumber. And Jim Carrey, in interviews, says that he looked at that check every single day. It's like you're looking at red every single day, in your pocket. Then you get rejected. The investor says, no, I'm not interested. Your idea is stupid. Your revenue model is broken. You're never going to survive. This is a, you, I've been rejected. All of you will get rejected when you raise money. You pull out some focus, goal, I'm going to get the money. You go to the next investor. It works. And the easiest and, and most uh, uh, pleasing part of goals is that anyone can do it. You can write down precise one and three year goals. You can write them down. It doesn't take time. It doesn't cost anything. And if you do one last thing, tell other people about your goals, you'll even further increase your chances of success. University studies prove 
that if you tell someone that you're going to do something, you're like 10 times more likely to do it than if you don't tell anyone. So if you think in your head you're going to take out the trash or wash the car, versus you tell your wife you're going to do it, it's a completely different <laughs> level of outcome at the end of those two uh, events. All you got to do is that, right? Not difficult, not laborious, doesn't cost a cent, yet 80% of the population doesn't even take the first step. Now, I'll just touch upon the second, I don't have the, detail to, the time to go through all the detail, but the reason people don't achieve goals, because you can write it down on a piece of paper that you want to have a $10 million business and you carry that piece of paper around and it doesn't happen, is because of a subject that was alluded to earlier here, knowledge. And that's why you're even here today, to learn things, to apply them in your business. Now, here's the interesting thing about goals. Research proves conclusively that if you unpack a goal into subcomponents, you're far more likely to achieve the goal. So your initial goal might be, I want to raise a million dollars uh, angel round for my business. If all of a sudden you unpack that goal into the milestones, you need a business plan. You might need some letters of reference. You might need to get introductions to angel investors. You might need to get your technology validated or get an early customer uh, uh, early adopter to look at the technology and endorse it. Whatever those sub-goals are, it's more manageable now. Everything's more manageable because you've taken a task or a goal and broken it down into components and it's easier to achieve the components than it is the overall task and of course it rolls up. And then what happens when you get to the top? Whatever the top is, it becomes the bottom. There should never be a time in your business or your life when you get to the top and there's nothing else. What are you going to do? Lay on the beach? Stare into space? Die? It's always something else. Always. At the beginning, the top of the pyramid is get funding, get a customer, get traction in the market. Once you achieve that, what's next? Build a million dollar business. And to build a million dollar business, you might need an office. You might need to do uh, branding and marketing and uh, sales events. You might need to hire people. Once you get to a million dollars in revenue, what's next? Ten million dollar business. You don't lose 10 kilos overnight, you lose it one kilo at a time. You don't build a hundred million dollar business overnight, you build it one million at a time. Unpack the goal. Unpack it into the individual steps required to achieve the overall objective. In fact, you know what, you know, speaking of, uh, of Jim Carrey, for the last, I don't know, 15 years, on a consistent basis, I've carried around one of those goal periods. Even though solve it's over, there's plenty of other things that I'm doing in my life right now. And I look at it every day. And as I go through a day and I interact with people and I get requests for things and invitations and so on, I focus my mind to see if that request or opportunity fits with what I'm trying to achieve. Simple. Simple. Free. Doesn't cost a cent to do. Yet, very, very few people do them. By a show of hands, and be honest, who has written goals on them at this very moment? Excellent. Now be honest as well. Show of hands, who's going to have written goals tomorrow or next week and carry them around? Excellent. I'm not a doctor. I don't save lives, but I hope I've saved at least the business. Because I'll tell you, this thing is not Matt said. It's not some person that's achieved a billion dollar set, this thing is proven by decades and decades of scientific research. You're basically saying you don't believe in a hundred years of research that this can help your business. So that's the end of my time. All of the success factors are in the book. They're all researched. There's a hundred footnotes. I read more than a thousand studies. And everything I say in the book is footnoted to a specific study. There's no opinion. You, you might not like it. You might not agree with it. And you might not want to do it, but you won't be able to say, I don't think what Matt is saying is right. Because it's not what I'm saying. It's what decades of research has proven in tier one institutions around the world. So if you like the presentation, you like the book, please blog about it. I really appreciate your time, and I'll be around for the next few hours if anyone wants to have a chat. Thanks, everyone.